today I'll be doing a review on factoring polynomials. Um, first, I'm going to start with the difference of squares, which is probably the easiest thing when it comes to factoring. Uh, difference of squares, all you have to do is take the square root of the first term, and that's going to go first in both, and then the square root of the second term, that's going to go last in both, and then one's plus, one's minus. So, first example, we have x squared minus 25. So, to fill in the parentheses, the first term is just the square root. The square root of x squared is our a. The square root of x squared is just x. x times x is x squared. And then the square root of 25 is 5. So, we're going to have plus 5 and minus 5. Same thing here. Square root of 4x squared is 2x. So, that goes first in both. And the square root of 81 is 9, so plus 9 and minus 9. But it's not always going to be that easy, because sometimes you can factor it just the same way, but then you can take stuff out after. So the first thing you want to check for is if it has a greatest common factor. Do they have anything in common? Yes, they do. They both are divisible by 4. So that's the first thing we can do is take out a 4. And if you take out a 4, we have x squared minus 16 left. So take out your greatest common factor, and you should be able to multiply to get back. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times 16 is 64. So you should be able to go 4 as a backwards. Equals. Um, now we can factor this part. The 4 is going to stay out front, and the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4, so we get x plus 4 and x minus 4. So we're going to do the same thing here. We can take out a greatest common factor. Notice it's x cubed. You can't use the difference of squares if it's x cubed, unless you can take something out first. So we're going to. We have 2x cubed minus 32x. They both have a 2 in common, and they both have an x, so we can take out an x from each term. That will leave us with x squared minus 16, and we're going to have something similar to the last one. The square root of 16 is 4, so we get 2x times 2x times x plus 4, x minus 4. And the last one, x squared plus 9. This is not a difference of squares because it's a sum of squares. You cannot factor these. These are not factorable. So because of the plus, it's not factorable. All right, next we're going to look at the sum difference of cubes. Um, a little bit different from the difference of squares because you could do it when it's either plus or minus. So, number one, we have x cubed minus 27. Um, we're going to be using the minus formula here, but you don't really have to use the formula if you think of it this way. So we want to factor it. If you do want to use the formula, a is equal to the cube root of the first term, and the cube root of x cubed is x. B is the cube root of 27, which what times what times what is 27? 3 times 3 times 3. So we're just plugging those into the formula. That's going to give us our factored form. So for number 1, we get a minus b, so we're just using this this part of the formula. a minus b is x minus 3, and then it's a squared, so square of the first, x squared, opposite sign, multiply these two, x times 3, a is x and b is 3, is 3x, and then square the last, gives us 9. So we're going to do the same thing for this one. Uh, but Always, you should look at if they have anything in common. And it's easier to deal with when this first term is positive. So we could do that. 
we can take out a negative 3. That gives us x cubed plus, because we took out a negative, 8. So the negative 3 stays out front. Our a is going to be x, and b is 2, because the cube root of 8 is 2. So we have x plus 2, and then we square the first. Opposite sign goes here. Multiply the 2, x times 2 is 2x. And then that last one's always positive. Square the last, then you get 4. So that's it for that one. And then this one. First, look for what they have in common. They do have two x's or three x's in common. So we have to take out three x's, x cubed. And then what do we have left? We took out three x's from here, so x squared minus 64. All the x's we took out of that one. So this is actually a difference of squares problem. So we have x cubed out front, and since this is squared, we use difference of squares. Square root of 64 is 8, so we get x plus 8 and x minus 8. Make sure you don't confuse the squares with the cubes because those are two different formulas. All right, next I'll be talking about factoring by grouping. And this is gonna be important later for when we're doing the AC method, which is another type of factoring. Uh, when you're factoring by grouping, the first thing you wanna do is group the first two and group the last two. And then you're gonna take a greatest common factor out of each of those. So, our first two, what do they have in common? All right, an x, so we take out an x. If we take out an x, we have x plus 2 left, because we just took one x from each of them. And if we multiply, we can get back to there. Plus, whatever sign that is drops. And then, what do these two have in common? Well, they're both divisible by 4, and they both have a y, so we take out 4y. Then what do we have left? Take out 4y, all we have is x plus 8y divided by 4y is just 2. Now, these are both terms. And what do these two terms have in common? They both have an x plus 2. So we can factor out the x plus 2. What do these two terms have in common? An x plus 2. And what's left on the outside? x plus 4y goes in the other one. So whatever's on the inside goes in one, whatever's on the outside goes in the other. We're going to do the same thing here. Group the first two, group the last two. What do ax squared and bx squared have in common? Well, they both have an x squared. And we're left with a plus b. Sign drops, so minus. What do these two have in common? Not much, but we could still say they have a 1 in common. You have to take something out when you're factoring by grouping. And then, if we take out a negative 1 from both, what do we have left? A plus B. Because we divided both of them by negative 1. Alright. So, these have to be the same for us to do this, also. So, we get everything on the outside goes in 1, x squared minus 1. And everything on the inside goes in the other, a plus b. But if you can keep factoring, you have to keep going. We can factor x squared minus 1 using the difference of squares. So square root of 1 is 1, so we get x plus 1, x minus 1. Can't do anything more with the a plus b, so we just write that too. Next, I'll be talking about factoring polynomials in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So there's no number in front of the x squared. Um, so first one, we have x squared minus 8x minus 20. Now when I think about these, I use an x method. Draw an x, put the last number in the top, the middle number in the bottom, 
All right, just the number. You don't have to worry about the x's when it's just x squared. So the last number is negative 20. Middle number is negative 8. And we're thinking of two things that multiply to give us this, that add up to this. So two things that multiply to equal negative 20 that add up to negative 8. Now, if you can't think of things right away, you could list out factors. Two things that multiply to equal 20 are 20 and 1. Then there's 5 times 4, or 10 times 2. And the only possible ones that will add up to an 8 are 10 and 2, just depending on their signs. Um, so it's got to be 10 and 2. And since it's negative 8, the 10 has to be negative. So basically we factored it. This factors into x minus 10 and x plus 2. So we're going to do the same thing for number 2. We need two things that multiply to equal 81. Multiply to equal 81. That add up to 18. So the only things you can really think of that multiply to equal 81 are 9 and 9. And those happen to be our answer. So 9 times 9, both positive, multiply to equal 81, add up to 18. So this was an easier one x plus 9 times x plus 9. And if you ever have something times itself, you can simplify it by saying x plus 9 squared. The last one, notice it's not a, uh, just x squared, there's a number in front of it. First thing you want to check, does it have the greatest common factor? It does. 3 goes in all these numbers. So that's the first thing we're going to do, take out a 3. If you take out a 3, you have x squared. 24 divided by 3 is minus 8x. And then plus 45 divided by 3 is 15. So for this one, we need two things that multiply to equal 15 to add up to negative 8. So you think about all your factors. 15 is divisible by 15, or 5 and 3, which happen to be our 2. And they multiply to be a positive, so they either both have to be negative or both positive. Since they add up to negative 8, it's negative 5 and 3. And negative 3. So we have 3 times x minus 5, x minus 3. Alright, and last and probably the most difficult of factoring. Um, when you're factoring with a number in front of the x squared, it's a little bit longer of a process. Um, you're going to use something similar to the x I was using before, but a few more steps. So when you set it up, this is called the AC method. AC method. Because you put A times C in the top. Now we're talking about the whole term, so 3x squared times 10. Go on the top. 3x squared times 10 is 30x squared. And they add up to B still. So B is negative 11x. We need two things that multiply to equal 30 that add up to negative 11. Not too bad. We know 5 and 6 go into 30, and they will add up to 11. So it's got to be some 5x and 6x, and they both have to be negative to add up to negative 11. So what we do with these is we replace our middle term with them. So they will go here. They replace the 11. So everything else stays the same. 3x squared minus 5x minus 6x plus 10. All right. Now we use factor by grouping, what we did before. Group the first two and group the last two. And you look at the greatest common factors of both of these. So what can we take out of the first two? Just an x, right? That's all they have in common. So we have left 3x minus 5. Minus. Whatever sign that is drops, you could take a 2 out of these. And then we have 3x minus 5, because we just divided both these numbers by negative 2 to get what's in here. If these two parentheses don't match up, you did something wrong, and you got to go back to that step. So everything on the inside goes in one of the parentheses, 3x minus 5, 
and everything on the outside, x minus 2, goes in the other. And that'll be our answer. So we're going to do the same thing for the next, the next one, but the first thing you want to look at, do they have anything in common? So for this one, yes they do. We can immediately take out a 4, or a 2, sorry. Take out a 2. And what do we have left? We have 2x squared minus x minus 6. 2x squared minus x minus 6. Then we use the AC method. So, a times c in the top. Whatever you take out is just going to stay out front. We don't need it for this part. ac is 2x squared times negative 6 is negative 12 x squared, and they add up to negative 1x. So two things that multiply equal negative 12 to add up to negative 1 are 3 times 4 multiplies equal 12, so it should be a 3x and 4x, and the 4 should be negative because 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So these replace our middle term. So we have 2 stays out front, 2x squared drops minus, or plus 3x minus 4x minus 6. Factor by grouping. Group the first two and the last two. So the 2 stays out front. We could take a x out of these. So we have 2x plus 3 minus, we could take a 2 out of here. So we have 2x plus 3 again. And then we'll have our final answer. So we have 2. Everything on the inside goes in 1, so 2x plus 3. And everything on the outside, x minus 2, will go in the other. And that's all I have for today. Hey, that was going to get the grand. Niggas do straight thing, boy. Truth be told, I remain the same. Never let us. Are you ready? Are you ready, Chris? Ready for what? Just... Okay, but it's still hurt. That's cool. Hey, Miguel. Look at your dick.